welcome to my first episode of Wi-Fi Battles. The rules are pretty simple. Pretty much everyone does Wi-Fi Battles, so I'll just get down to it. I'm going to bring my theme team today. My theme team of uh, one Pokemon of every generation, one through six. As you can see in my battle box on the left, I have Zapdos, Octillery, Me and Chow, Rotom Heat, Flygon, and I forget the other guy's name. Sorry to say. I'll tell you though once I actually get to see the cheat sheet and look at its name. I am starting out at 15, uh, 1500, because this is a new season. So I figured it was a good time to get, uh, to get going. I'll be using this team throughout the entire week, and I'm facing someone from Japan. Back in the wall, all water, it's a monotype team. It's good, I'm using a theme team, he's using a theme team, it would seem. Cloister is going to be skill and set, and that's the one I'm most worried about. So let's see how this goes. So I am going to lead with my Zapdos. My then your Tom Heat. Actually, I'm going to lead your Tom Heat, Zapdos, Octillery. I forgot to tell you his name, I'm sorry, it starts with an M, I don't remember. Once I got to the sixth gen Pokemon, I just kind of went with what best uh, helped my team out. from electric web, it avoids, which is too bad. And this is obviously going to be a toxic stall. No way he just leads out the toxic for just because he feels like it. He's obviously planning on stalling me out. Makes me wonder if he's not too uh, too offensive because with the uh, half fire type and it could actually do a lot of damage to me. Just hit the hydro pump, and that's that okos me. The critical hit was probably why it knocked me out like that. But that's okay. Now I get to go in with Zapdos. I'm guessing he's going to go for another toxic this turn, but not much for me to do. I could protect on it, but then he's just going to tox me next turn. So it's prolonging me inevitable and making the battle longer. I know he's slower than me now. And that will faint. I'm uh, my Zapdos is holding a Zap plate, so that extra 0.2 damage probably is what came through there. I know it's a controversial item. Most people don't really see it as a useful item, but I, I honestly prefer over the life orb when I'm planning on using a lot of a specific type of attack. And when I have a Pokemon that's not exactly the be uh, the bulkiest. He does have the Citrus Berry. I will have missed, but it wouldn't have mattered as I'm not a physical attacker. This will definitely faint him now. He forfeits. And I, that's not the way I would have liked to have started the this uh, series, but it kind of shows the risks of getting a monotype team, I suppose. I think it's a learning experience. <laughs> Malamar, that's what it is. Just barely clicked. So I went up 14 points for that. Facing another Japanese uh, player. He's he brought a lot more competitive, a much more competitive team. My guess is probably going to be a Quiver Dance, uh, Vesp, Vespaquin, uh, 
Providence. Well, the Bucks, I, I just forgot. A Evil Light, Polygon 2, a Lias, I don't know what it's going to have. A Whimsicott, probably either going to stall out or with a. No, it's going to probably be a staller. Obviously, an Age of Slash, which does what Age of Slash is do and a Conkelder, which I would drink guts, but I don't know how he's going on it, he or she. Anyway, let's see. I'm predicting his lead to be... I would lead with Porygon if I were him. So I'm going to go with my Minchu or Minchow. Then Malamar with the Zapdos, because my Zapdos has hidden power eyes. the Alpha Kai, I mean, uh, Lodius. I'm going to get the fake out because it's a little bit easy damage on him. He's probably going for Jacob here, I'm guessing. I, I hardly ever see them go for anything but Jacob here. Now, I'm thinking he might be faster than me with the Mega. But with any luck, I'll be faster, or he'll miss his attack, and I'll be able to get a U-turn off on him. But he just goes straight for the sidekick, much more to the point. Low risk, a very good move. I'm going to try going on him with the Zapdos. Go with my hidden power and hope it hold, uh, carries me through. Should outspeed me here though. Nope, I outspeed him. That did an okay amount, not as much as I was hoping for. Now with that calm mind, I'm not going to have much of a chance to. I'm not going to have much power, uh, much more power against him. Best I could do is hope with the Zap Plate Thunder uh, Bolt to get paralyzed. And I don't want to hard switch into Malamar, even though I probably should, so I'm just going to. Guy that was after us. I, the, the paralysis doesn't come through. That will leave me with three HP. Very, very close. Now, like I said, my only my only real chance is to hit him with a thunderbolt and hopefully paralysis. But I'm actually going to go for a tailwind to set up for Malamar because I know I'm going down this turn. Hopefully get some momentum with Malamar and sweep him, if I can. Going to set up, I'm going to use a superpower. It's not going to do much, but I just want to get my attack up. It's a contrary Malamar. That's not going to affect me your dark typing. That's one advantage you have with Pokemon like Malamar, is people don't quite know the typing of it. Go for the knockoff, and it should faint. And it does. Porygon 2. I already have one speed or one power up, and I honestly have no issue going for another one, so I'll go super power. Evil Light will be an issue, but I'll knock off next turn. Of 
hoping for the paralysis, and he has a good chance of getting it with discharge. Tailwind does wear off, but I'm not too worried because I'm pretty sure the uh, Porygon 2 is actually kind of slow to begin with. I'm considering it over half with superpower. I'm going to go for another superpower. Just because I perhaps because I'm a little greedy. me up to plus I don't remember if uh, superpower does uh, one or two I believe I'm at max attack now I believe I'm now at plus six and wimps caught I don't have anything really to hit it with and my knockoff will not do too much to it so I'm going to do is I'm going to go with a psycho cut hope I outspeed if I don't he's going to just try to stall me out but with any luck the this uh, psycho cut will just uh, oko it. We'll get to a point where it's irretrievable. And he has leftovers. I'm not too worried. Even with a uh, leech seed, he shouldn't go above half. And I should have him next turn. Unless he has a Giga Drain, which I wouldn't be surprised. In which case, this, yeah, okay, so he actually gets above half. He goes for the substitute. And I'm just kind of racing against the clock. Because he has leftovers and I can't switch out a leech, uh, leech seed, so he's just going to be able to keep doing that to me. Luckily, he has to damage himself for substitute. So the second he slips up, I'll have him down. And he's always going to damage himself a little more than he's going to gather back each turn. So I have about three turns if he wants to stall me out like this. Risk a knockoff, take out the uh, to take out leftovers, but not going to because I'm pretty sure he's just going to go to another sub again. But if he doesn't, I don't want to slip up and lose the games because I was getting greedy. That'll be his last leftover, or his last uh, substitute he's going to be getting up. He may get one at one more, but if that's all he's going to do, I'm going to win this. It's just a matter of time because I should have enough HP after this still to do damage to him. Yeah. If it if it takes that same amount next turn as well, then he's going to be in trouble. Or she. I just assume it's a he, because the avatar is a he. Okay, so barring me fainting on this next uh, next leech uh, leech seed, then he's going uh, going down. It will be close though. I don't think I'll be fainted by this. I think I'll be left uh, single digits in HP. Yep, left with three HP. Unless I'm mistaken, he's out of uh, he's out of range of getting another substitute. But he does have just enough for another substitute, so he's going to win this game on stalling me. Not quite. Yeah, I don't quite agree with it, but. That wasn't that way I agree with him, I don't. Winning by stall is just not my style, but obviously it worked for him. This will be the last battle of this video. We're going to do three battles. Again, pretty standard way to do Wi Fi's. Uh, and I'm back exactly, I'm back exactly where I started, so hopefully we'll end today po on a positive. One issue. 
Especially since I'm at 1431, so. And a Spaniard, so this should be. Uh, I kind of like my chance of it, I won't get too arrogant. Okay, so we have. I don't even know what you're gonna put an Arcanon, really. An Eviolite, Porygon 2, a. Prankster, Meowstic, probably. Equivalence, maybe Venomoth. A Mega Blastoise, and. I don't know what he's going to pack on. I don't think I don't know what he's going to pack. Other than that, I don't even have a guess because it can run so many different ways. Myotic. I'm actually going to leave out with uh, Octillery. Then, then Zap does. And... And then Flygon. Now I've got every single Pokemon that I have in this so as well as that just seemed to be what mattered. Those seemed to be the, what mattered meaning those seemed to be the best picks. So it just happened. Okay, so I'm sensing a sleep powder here. I know that Van Moth is kinda fast. Definitely faster than my artillery. I don't have anything that will counter a sleep powder. I'm just going to risk the sleep powder. My artillery, I don't want to put out anything else. Okay, he's going to go for a quiver dance. This is a sniper. Octillery. Octillery I pick as a as my snipe set over uh, Kingdra because it's a higher special attack. And they're both special attackers, so I figure it's the best pick. So even with his uh, his boost and special defense, he should be taken out this next time. But he does get me with the sleep out of this turn. I can hope for one turn uh, next turn that I uh, wake up, but it's obviously not that likely. I don't get it. So one more quiver dance, he'll be at max attack, max speed, and max special defense, and I'll be in trouble. He'll just sweep my team. And Octillery's fast asleep. Now he's probably going to go for Bug Buzz. I have a, I had a friend that did this very, uh, very same thing with Butterfree. It was, it was quite annoying. To say the least. And it was a critical hit, which I don't think was really necessary. But, yeah, the hacks will be what they will be. Live that, luckily. And it doesn't do what I was hoping for a Baron, but hope springs eternal, I guess. This next buzz, this next buzz bug, bug buzz will definitely fame me. However, Positive Zapdos is not going to outspeed, speed, so he's probably just going to go straight for the bug buzz because he has no other reason. He has nothing else to do. So I am just going to hope that my Thunderbolt comes through and that I survive, but he baton passes into something. I don't believe he has any ground types, if I remember correctly. 
I didn't take a picture. I should, probably should have, though. Into the Porygon. If it has an evil eye, I think it will be such a wall with a special uh, special defense. Yeah, it, it's definitely evil light as well as this uh, plus six in the special defense. The ice beam. Yeah, that's going to fade me. So I'm going to end today's episode on negative. One win, two losses. Not quite the way I wanted to start the series, but just, just the way it went, uh, went, I guess. So I hope you come again tomorrow to see some more of my battles. I apologize for all the uh, disturbance and the static. If uh, you know that it was picked up, I've been working for quite a while trying to get it to be just right. But my program's just crapped out on me, so I just had to do this without as much audio editing as I would have liked. So I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And I hope to see you next time.